Hello. In this video, where should I stand? What do you think? In this video, I'm going to look at how to work on your P5.js sketch, or really any HTML, JavaScript, CSS, combo, thingamabob, um, outside of, in, in any old text editor, um, by running a local server on your laptop. Now, what does that mean? Actually, I'm going to use the whiteboard for a second. So let's just think about the internet and the web and all that stuff for a second. So you are making a web page, and you have a laptop. And to make your web page, you're maybe editing an HTML file, maybe you have a CSS file, maybe you have a JavaScript file. And you're editing all these files, they're just plain text files, and you're editing them in some text editor. So the text editor I'm going to use happens to be one called Sublime, but you can use any text editor. List of text editors, I would say now, if I could think of them. But you, I'll put some in the comments, and you can write some in the comments. Your favorite, put your favorite text editor in the comments. So, but I'm going to use Sublime Text. So you're editing these files. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you is that, you know, another thing that you're going to run on your laptop is a thing called a browser. And your browser actually has the ability just to open those files. So you could ask your browser, open the HTML file, and you're going to see that the result of that file in the browser. I'm going to fix the mic here. Mag magic edit. So if you open those files from the browser, you're going to see the result of those files in the browser. Now, let's think of what's your ultimate goal here. The ultimately, the idea probably is that you have a server. Server and you have your server hosting some website, you know, website.com. And ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to take your files and put them on a server so that other people on their laptops and computers or phones or whatever it is can connect and look at your files. So by opening the file by opening the HTML file from the browser, you aren't actually doing what the web server itself will do, which will ultimately serve up the files so that other people can request them. So a better, and in fact, a lot of things won't work if you just open those files. So, eh. <laughs> okay, I guess to keep going. <laughs> I can't start over and erase all this. Um, so, um, so ultimately what you want to do is, by, by the way, like the, you know, the, the YouTube makes these charts. You can look at these charts where you see people drop off and stop watching your video and just about everybody stopped watching this video now. But for the few of you who are remaining, I'm going to keep going with this. So what you ultimately want to do is run something which I'll call a local server. So if you run a local web server on this machine, you are more accurately simulating what will happen when you eventually upload your files to a server, and everything will look and work and function correctly. So this is what I want to show you in this video. How do you edit your files with a text editor, run a local server so that you can see the result in the file of those files in your browser, and accurately simulate the environment that will eventually exist when you publish your stuff to the world and become the person who publishes their stuff to the world. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to the computer now and take a look at this. So this is actually the P5 desktop editor, which you may or may not have used, um, actually does all this for you. It's a text editor. You hit this run button and uh, it spawns a local server. It opens a little browser, which shows your page. But what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just quit out of it. And I'm going to show you that if I go to my computer's desktop, I don't know if you can't really see this, and I go here. I was actually, I made, I, there's a folder called test sketch, and in this folder are the files associated with my sketch. There's an HTML file, a JavaScript file, and a folder called libraries. That libraries folder is where the P5.js library itself exists. So what I want to do is now I have something, I have a text editor called Sublime Text. You can Google it, you can find it, you can use any text editor you want. And what I want to do is look at those files in Sublime Text. One way I can do that is actually just take this and drag it in. And now you can see here that I have now have, I'm now browsing and looking at those files. And if I wanted to edit my code, I could look at it right here. And now I can edit the code. I can actually make the font a little bit bigger. Uh, and you can see here I'm editing my code. Now, let me make the next point. If I just go back here and click on this HTML file, I have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to open it in some default browser. It might be Safari, it might be Chrome. If I open it, it opens it in Chrome, and you can see it's working. It's actually running, but look what's happening up here. It's opening it from the file path. 
file users processing desktops test sketch. So while this works, there are a lot of things that won't work when you're opening it just from the file path itself that only work if you're using a local server, running a local server. Certain things like loading an image file into your sketch, for example, won't work. So while this is okay as a solution, a quick and dirty test, I personally would recommend never doing it this way. Instead, you want to run a local server. So there happens to be this wiki on GitHub under the P5JS wiki, which has a bunch of different instructions of different ways you can run a local server on different operating systems. Windows, Linux, Mac, Apache, blah, blah, blah. The thing that I'm going to use, which I think is the simplest, is you, I'm, since I'm on a Mac and a Macs come with Python installed, I can just run a Python local server from any directory I want. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to do this is by running terminal. So if you don't know where terminal is, it's in the, the you know, applications utilities. There's an application called terminal. When you run it, it looks something like this. This is giving you console command line access to your computer. And I can type various things. Like if I type PWD, that stands for print working directory. And you can see, oh, I'm in user slash processing. And if I just type CD, that means change directory. And if I type desktop, I want to change to the desktop. And now if I type P, PWD, I can see, ah, I'm in users processing desktop. Other things I can do is I can hit the up arrow. The up arrow goes to my most recent command and I see it again. And now if I'm on the desktop, I can run a local server from here. And I can say Python dash M simple HTTP server. So this just happens to be a command that I have memorized, but I'm saying I want to run a Python program that's built into the Macintosh. It's called simple HTTP server. I forget what the dash M stands for. <laughs> Somebody will tell me in the comments. I hit enter and you can see, ah, serving HTTP on 000 port 8000. What this means is my, this computer is now running a web server. Where is the web server running? It's running on localhost, and another way of saying localhost is 0.0.0.0. .0 .0. So that's the IP address, the internet protocol address, the address, the numeric address of a computer on the internet. And those numbers can become rather important, but for us right now, we can just think of it as localhost, port 8000 being the port that other people can connect to. Who are the other people? They're me. <laughs> so I am the other person, and what I want to do now is go up here, right, and instead of accessing my sketch from file, what I want to do is say HTTP localhost. Now you can see I've done this before on this computer, um, so it's already like pre-filling it in, but I want to go to localhost colon port 8000 localhost colon port 8000, I hit enter. Now, you don't actually see my sketch because actually I, what I now see is a view of everything on the desktop. So you can see I have a bunch of other things like I was doing this uh, photo booth um, P5 demo which uh, has this snap button which allows me to take, so this is something I'm going to make a tutorial about in a minute, another video, <laughs> watch a video, a few videos from now, you'll find this one. But you can see I'm sort of browsing, this is the minimum spanning tree example. So I have a bunch of folders with sketches, I'm sort of serving up that whole, the, my whole desktop, which I can choose to do or not to do. But what I'm looking for is test sketch, this is the one, and I can make it bigger in Chrome by shift command plus. Um, so now I see the sketch running. And I could go back to the code and I could say, hey, let me change the background to 100, hit save, tab over to Chrome, hit refresh, and you can see now I have the new sketch running. So this is another way of working outside of some all-in-one editor environment. Text editor, local server, browser. But missing piece. Let's say in draw, the draw loop, I want to debug the value of x. So I'm going to say, console.log x. Now I could have said print line x. Print line is a P5 specific function that prints something to the console. Console.log is the sort of native JavaScript version of that function, basically the same thing. But if I put that in there and I go back and hit refresh, where is it? I don't see it. No log, no console. So in Chrome, I can use something called the Chrome Developer Tools. Are you excited? You shouldn't be. Maybe you are. Maybe you should be. I don't know. So where do you get those? View, up here under view, developer, 
developer tools. But I want to go straight to the JavaScript console. The developer tools are this massive thing that has all sorts of inspect this, look at that, HTML, CSS, style this, magic this. All I really care about is the JavaScript console right now. I want to see things that are console.logged. So I'm going to select JavaScript console and it's going to appear. Now, it won't necessarily look like this on your computer. You're probably going to see it at the bottom. You're probably going to see it a lot smaller. But what I've done, you know, you can, you can, there's various ways you can like move it around and change the font size. You know, I want it to be kind of uh, rather big. Um, so I can, for a tutorial, you can see it. So what's nice here is you can see there's the result and it's showing me these, each one of these things is printing from sketch.js line number eight. So if I go over here and see line number eight, console.log x. So that's great. Now, I can also comment this out and refresh the sketch. One of the wonderful things about the Chrome JavaScript console is that it is interactive. What do I mean by that? I can actually type in the value x, the variable x, which is a variable in my program, hit enter, and it's going to show me the current value of x. So I can kind of live debug as the program's running. I can do other things, like I could say x equals 50, getting to the other side of the screen, hit enter, and you can see that I actually changed on the fly the value of that variable, and it moved. I can do other things like, what if I said no loop? No loop is a function in P5 that turns off draw, and suddenly it stops looping. I can say loop. I can do things like just call other functions, like if I say create P, hello? Create P is a P5 function that creates a paragraph DOM element. And there you go. <laughs> Hello is right there. It's also showing me what's in that DOM element. And there's, so there's a lot more to this. And I'll, as I make other tutorials that use the Chrome Developer Console, you'll see more and more about it. Um, so this has been about 10 minutes. Hopefully this uh, helped you make sense of the world. <laughs> It's a very hard world to make sense of these days, and this probably doesn't help make sense of the world, but it makes sense of a small part of the world, the local server on your laptop with the Chrome developer tools. I'm sure you have questions, um, and I will answer them somehow in a way, I don't know how yet, but in, in the comments of this video or in another video. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, thanks very much. I'm going to hit stop.